All right, so today we will be doing an independent t-test and a dependent t-test, both in Excel only. Um, most people actually end up using the data packages, but there is a way to get around that, so I'll be showing you that one today. So start with independent t, we will be looking at the movie scores between males and females on a scale of 1 to 10, which is pretty common, to see if males prefer movies over females at a significant rate. So the first thing we're going to do is we will need to find the average or the mean. So to do this, we will just take one comma at a time and do the equal sign, average, open parenthesis, and then just click and drag the column, and then close parenthesis and hit enter. So here we see the average movie score for males. We can then take our cursor and hover over this box and just drag it across. So here we see that on average, females were actually scoring higher than males. The next thing we need to find is the standard deviation. In order to do that, we will hit the equal sign again, and then STDEV, open parenthesis, click and drag all the columns, not the mean column, but the true data, close parenthesis and enter. And then again, you can click and drag that column. The next thing we'll need when it comes to graphing is going to be our confidence interval. In order to do this, we'll hit equals and then type out confidence, open parenthesis. The first number we type in is alpha, which for us is usually 0.05, so this would be the 95% confidence, and then comma, the standard deviation, which is what we had right above, and comma, and the size is how many people are in each group. So here we have 10, so we'll type in 10, close parenthesis, and again you can drag that one over. The last thing that we'll want to get is going to be the degrees of freedom. Remember for independent t that's going to be your n minus 1 plus your n minus 1. So here we had 10 people, minus 1 is 9, and here we have 10 people, minus 1 is 9. So total, that should be 18. All right, to get the t statistic, we'll first have to start with the p-value. So to get the p-value, we'll do equals, and then t.test, open parenthesis. Array 1 is going to just be all the values for group 1 and then comma, array two, so all the values for group two, and then a comma, the tails, usually we do a two-tailed distribution, but you can choose one-tailed, so here we'll do two, comma, and then the type. In this case, we have two samples, and we're going to just assume that they do have equal variances, so we'll make it number two. If you were to do a dependent T, that would be a one, and if you're doing an independent T, but you assume that the two groups do not have equal variance, you would choose three, so here we'll choose two and then close parenthesis, and there's our p-value. So that is definitely not significant. But we can go ahead and calculate t itself. So here I'll do the value of t. So here you'll do equals t dot inv dot 2t. This is because we want to not get the p-value but the t-value, so it's t inverse, and then 2t is for two-tailed. We'll open parenthesis. Click our probability, so that will be our p-value from up here, comma, and then our degrees of freedom. And there's our t-value. So if we were to write this up, we would write t, parenthesis, degrees of freedom, so 18, equals the t-value, so 0.48. equals comma, the p-value, which in this case is 0.64, and that would be it. So next is to graph this. We'll begin by dragging over the two column names, then hitting the control key and clicking and dragging over just the means. Once you've done that, 
we'll go over to insert and over at charts we'll click on this one that looks like a column chart and then click on 2d column this first one all right the next thing we need are going to be those error bars for the confidence intervals so we'll go over to add chart element error bars more error bars options scroll down here to the error amount and we will click on custom and then specify value go ahead take everything out of this box and we will just click on the confidence interval box for both come down to the negative error value and do the same so we'll take everything out then click and drag the confidence interval box and then click OK. And there we have our confidence intervals. All right, so the next thing we need to do is get some axes titles. So just go to Add Chart Element, Axes Titles, and then click on both Primary Horizontal and Primary Vertical. We can go ahead and name these. So this one would be gender, because it's male and female. And this would be average movie score. APA format does not require a chart title, so we will just click on this box and delete it. Next, we need to go to Add Chart Element, Grid Lines, Get Rid of Them. And when it comes to submitting APA, it's important that we change the colors to grayscale. And there you have it. So there's your figure that you can include that has your means and your confidence intervals for gender and average movie score. And you have your T ready to be written up. All right, so next we have a dependent T. So again, this would be if each participant actually had to rate in both columns. So for instance, participant one needed to rate a chick flick and an action thriller. Participant two also rated the same chick flick and action thriller and so on and so forth. We'll start this one out the same way. So we will begin by needing a mean or an average. So we will do equals average, open parenthesis, and then we will click and drag through the entire column and then close parenthesis. Once you do this, you can hover your cursor over to the right hand corner and then just drag it over to the other box. So here we see that the mean score for the chick flick is a 2.7 and for the action thriller it's a 5.2. Next we'll get the standard deviation. So we'll hit equals STDEV, open parenthesis, Click the same columns, being sure to not include the mean. And again, we can click in that right hand corner and drag it over. We will get our confidence intervals by typing in equals confidence, open parenthesis. Begin with your alpha value, so usually we use 0.05, which would be the 95% confidence. The standard deviation, so that number that we found right above. And the size, how many people are we measuring? Here we have 10. And again, you can click and drag that box over. Next, we'll find our degrees of freedom. But remember, when it comes to a dependent t-test, it'll only be the total amount of participants minus 1. We only have 10 participants, minus 1 is 9, even though they're rating twice. Next, we will run the t-test. First, we'll have to find the t-test p-value before we can get actual t. We do this by doing equals t.test, open parenthesis, Array 1, which is going to be all of the scores for the chick flick, and then a comma. Array 2, all of the scores for the action thriller, 
and then a comma. Then you must pick if it will be a one-tailed distribution or a two-tailed. Usually we choose two-tailed, but in some cases you may want to choose one-tailed, so we'll go with two for now. And the type. In this case, it's a dependent T, so it will be paired. If it was an independent T, we could choose two sample, depending on if we believe that it has equal variance or does not. But since this is a dependent T test, each of the numbers are paired, so we will choose one. Close the parenthesis, and there's our p-value, so this looks very significant. Next, we will get the actual t value by doing equals t dot inv dot 2t. If you were doing a one-tailed t test, you would just do t dot inv, but since this is two-tailed, we will be doing 2t. The reason that we do t dot inv is because this is the inverse. We don't want the p value, we want the t value. Then we will hit open parenthesis. The probability, so what we had before, that p value right there, comma, and then our degrees of freedom. And there's our t value. So if we were to write this up, we would do t, parenthesis, the degrees of freedom, 9, equals the t value, so 6.71, and then p is less than 0 0.001, because this p is less than 0 0.001. If the p was greater than 0 0.001, we would report it as it is, but since it's not, that's what we'll go with. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and graph this. In order to do this, we will click and drag over the titles, then hit control and click and drag over the means only. Then go over to insert, over to charts, and click on this first one, insert column chart, and then 2D column, this first one. So the next thing we need to do is add in the error bars. So we will click on Add Chart Element, click on Error Bars, down to More Error Bars Options, come over to the Format Error Bars, scroll down and click on Custom. Then click on Specify Value. Our error values are going to be our confidence intervals, so we'll go ahead and back out of that and then click on the confidence interval boxes. So click and drag. We'll come over to the negative error value, and again we'll do the same thing. So we'll delete what's in there, click on one of the confidence intervals, and drag over to the other box. And then click OK. And there's our error bars. The next thing we need to do is add access titles. So we'll click on access titles, primary horizontal, Chart Element, Access Titles, Primary Vertical, and go ahead and type those in. So you just click on the box, delete what's in there, and we will make this bottom one type of movie, making sure that everything is capitalized. And on this Access Title will be Average Score. APA does not require a chart title, so we'll just click on it and hit the Delete key. And now it's gone. Again, we'll go to Add Chart Element, go to Grid Lines, and get rid of those. So click on Primary, Major, Horizontal, and they will go away. And the last thing you need to do is change the colors so that they are gray for APA submissions. And there you have it. So here you have your graph to submit, and you have your t-values ready to go. And that's t-tests in Excel.